Good evening. I am uh, Kaushika from uh, Chukri Trading Mix uh, Private Limited, India Private Limited. Uh, on behalf of Chukri uh, Trading Mix uh, Private Limited, I am introducing Dr. Uh, Rajmani, sir. Um, Dr. Rajmane has done B Civil Engineering from BVB College of Engineering Technology, Hubli. Then he did his MTech from IIT Chennai. And then he did his PhD work in geopolymer concrete. He was founder, head Center for Advanced Concrete Research in SRM University between 2010 to 2020. He was founder at Advanced Materials Lab, CSER, SCRC Chennai, 1973 to 2010. His fields of interest start from cement hydration to all different materials, concrete making materials, ready mix concrete, precast concrete, you name anything in concrete. Dr. Rajmane has worked on that. Most importantly, the mind-blowing fact is uh, he has published more than 500 publications in national, international journals, very huge number. He got uh, first prize in 1976 uh, for his work on low-cost uh, house <clears throat> using lato blocks, that is blocks from a laterite soil. In 2000, uh, 2005, he got a Bridge Mohan Lal Memorial Prize from Institute of Engineers. In 2005, he got first prize in International Congress on Fly Ash for his paper on geopolymer concrete. In 2008, Dr. Rajmane was given the Outstanding Concrete Technologist Award by Indian Concrete Institute. In 2017, he got Best Paper President, President of India Award by Institute of Engineers for the paper on copper slag. His award list and his works are very big and uh, I can say uh, that will go on and uh, it will take uh, more time and uh, uh, Dr. Rajmane, we have to give him his time. So I will reduce his introduction or by telling that uh, we are honored as Kukrit uh, people to have with us today on our webinar series. And I'm sure the audience from different uh, fields of concrete and civil engineering field will enjoy his lecture. Thank you very much. I will leave the floor to Dr. Rajmane, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Anjali, can I start now? Yes, sir. Yes, Hello. sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the, my screen is fully seen. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, friends. Uh, uh, Kaushik has given a good introduction of mine. Uh, it is all because of the institution I was working and uh, the colleagues I had. Um, and today we are going to speak on a new material uh, you know, uh, called geopolymer concrete. And uh, let us see how we are uh, able to see, look at this material uh, uh, with a little material science background. Mm. Engineering background is also required, but uh, material science, which is a simple material science side, also we should keep in the mind um, because this is a new material. Okay. So, um, Uh, actually, uh, why do we want to you know the geopolymer? Okay. Uh, global warming is a phenomena all of us we are hearing. And uh, you know the effects of global warming, I need not tell anything here. But can we reduce the global warming from a civil engineering side applications? Okay, by using a uh, some uh, new techniques and new materials. So that way, you know, our geopolymer will be a good material for that purpose. 
uh, because uh, we are uh, using the waste materials. So we can look at the cement consumption uh, versus a very, very small. This number is only indicative, not exact number. Very small. But uh, you can see the other countries, you know, China, and if you look at the Korea, you look at the Malaysia or Thailand, or even China, anywhere where they have done a lot of infrastructure uh, building, the cement consumption is more than 1,000. 1,000 kilogram per capita. So we are uh, nothing now. We are uh, usage of uh, cement is very, very little. And you can uh, very well know that you know, our infrastructure still has to be developed so much. If anybody has visited a simple country like Malaysia, they will know how much we are behind. And uh, Malaysia was almost zero about 50 years back, 60 years back, and similarly China. But now you can see, go and visit them. It is almost equal to any developer country in Europe or America. So much of infrastructure has uh, come up because of the construction activities. Now, same thing will be started in India, and we will also do the same thing. But the uh, issue is now we have to use a lot of uh, cements you now for all the applications. Uh, because the most of, most important uh, material of construction is the cement only. Now, uh, the cement has got you know a lot of uh, embodied energy, and uh, also it emits a lot of carbon dioxide. As a result, you know we are actually contributing more to the, uh, um, the greenhouse gases emission and uh, the global warming. And we have uh, actually agreed with uh, all the international community to reduce our uh, global warming uh, uh, gases uh, uh, production. And uh, so we have to do all our time. Uh, anything which can help us to uh, contribute to this, uh, our agreement we have made with the, uh, all the international community. But it is very tough time for us because our development is at a very, very low stage. Okay, but still we have to go ahead and that way your polymer will be a good thing. Okay, now, uh, geopolymer is uh, now a new material uh, which is uh, uh, having a utility of uh, silica and aluminum. Okay, uh, we are, uh, this is different from Portland cement. Okay. And we are using the word poly, polymer, polymer, and uh, there is a you know 3D polymeric chain is formed, and uh, we are we have found that it can be as good as the ordinary cement concrete in terms of any properties you want, structural grade properties or uh, durability and things like. That. That's why it has become a very useful material for us. Now, for the people who are not initiated into uh, what is the meaning of polymer, uh, this is the slide. No, you can see that we are having carbon to carbon connection here in usual plastics or polymers. Okay, and this is a carbon carbon bond. Okay, and you can see carbon is directly connected to the carbon. And you can see when they are uh, that the connection can go on occurring and we will get a very big chain, and that's why we call it as polymer. Okay, one unit is called monomer when uh, so many units join, we get polymer. Okay, so this polymer is plastics because uh, organic because there is a carbon element which goes on you know uh, becomes the chain. Okay, but in geopolymer carbon is not present. Okay, carbon is not the you know repeating uh, element, and uh, the repeating element is this SI and aluminum. SI and aluminum are the repeating uh, forming units. Uh, and you can see SI is not directly, it is always connected through oxygen. Aluminum also is connected to oxygen. I am giving this information just to tell you that this binder is different from ordinary concrete. I want to bring to your notice. That's why I am spending one more minute time on this. Okay. Now, when those, you can see here, silica is there connected through the alumina through oxygen. There is a silicon here connected through aluminum, connected through aluminum through oxygen. That means, you know, silicon will never get connected to uh, silicon directly. It is always connected through oxygen. So this is a speciality of the geopolymer. And because of presence of oxygen like this, 
the geopolymers are having a very different properties than the cement matrix where there is no polymeric bond form okay and uh, you can see here depend upon the the ratio of this uh, uh, si to al uh, we can find out uh, what is the property of the uh, geopolymer and uh, when i say in this lecture whenever i use the word sodium you can very very uh, support in your mind that i am speaking about potassium also but generally we use uh, sodium because that is most uh, easily available and abundantly available element in the world you can see our part of the silicon is present in this form you can see is always having a tetrahedral phenomena uh, in the configuration and this will get connected to the another uh, silicon or aluminum so this way you should remember that we are talking about this kind of you know uh, three dimensional uh, unit uh, joining each other okay you can see the, the so this is a uh, aluminum also is like that so i showed you this is a silicon is also like that and uh, aluminum also like that so tetrahedral aluminum tetrahedral aluminum actually uh, joins with the tetrahedral silicon and we get the uh, total uh, system and that is the polymer okay so and one thing you now aluminum will never this aluminum will never connect with another aluminum this is a world known uh, phenomena so we must remember that aluminum always connects to silicon actually speaking uh, the rule is given that is uh, somebody has found out that rule why they want you uh, know uh, there is no bond between al and al directly it is o only and it is proved okay now you can see the central one is the silicon polymeric silicon si 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 all these are the original silicon polymeric silica okay now one silica is removed and uh, aluminum is put in our chemical reactions okay and we add apply ash and mix with the soda silicate solution this happens uh, first this uh, chain is formed in that chain silica is removed and uh, aluminum is formed and these two are available from our aluminum is available for apply ash and silica is available from our uh, sodium silicate as well as the uh, that kind of slag or uh, apply ash and metallic ion we are using so this is substitution can be many number so silicon can be substituted by many number okay now only thing you remember that silicon is four valency aluminum is three valency so we must add one more element to make it neutral because uh, all molecules in the world are uh, neutral when they are being actually uh, present so for that we require the sodium that means aluminum will always connect with uh, sodium and together it will be equal to silicon So let us remember that, and uh, this is a chemical reaction of the Portland cement. You can see this reaction does not have any uh, polymeric uh, no system here. Okay. So I want to bring to your notice, uh, friends, that uh, Joe polymer is the word uh, we are using because it was uh, started by David Rhodes, and he patented the word Joe polymer. But I have uh, explained earlier, it is nothing but a silicon. and aluminum coming together with the help of the sodium to become a chain so this kind of uh, aluminum silicate chain is used by many many uh, scientists in the world for many other applications also and they call their own names so uh, soil cement these are the names given in the literature to mean the same material okay so uh, put here 15 there may be another few numbers can come because the people working in actually these aluminum silicate systems are from different backgrounds uh, varying from chemistry uh, physics uh, and chemical engineers clay chemist uh, and you know artists so many people are working only in, in india geopolymer is worked only by civil engineers only in india and no chemistry person is working on geopolymer in india except in uh, cbr central building research institute and to some extent maybe in nccbm and in sir other than these three institutions i don't find any body any uh, academic institutions uh, which chemistry people coming into the picture of geopolymer at in a large way 
so this is the difficulty we are facing so we will uh, now uh, chemistry people should be actually induced to work with us so that we work properly and uh, characterize our material and chemistry people may not feel that we are quickly there a new material come up nothing and uh, we can it is nothing but a geolite which is a very famous material for them geolite and geolite is a wonderful material for so many applications and geolite is a crystalline or is a non crystalline also so when they produce the geolite they can make the small variations and make it amorphous okay so like this you know we can create a, a geopolymers uh, to chemist people and uh, so that uh, but the only thing they should know that uh, this uh, we have to produce uh, uh, amorphous it should not decline okay this is a simple matter everybody know about it now let us see what is geopolymer actually uh, i told you geopolymer is a binder has a binder called geopolymer and uh, it binds any other material like uh, cement that means when you call a geopolymer concrete the binder is only different otherwise everything is same binder means uh, binding material uh, powdery material is a binding material and uh, we are using granular material for actually the um, uh, filling system and we are having liquid okay liquid will have two purpose one is chemical reaction another it will also give the volatility to the mix so the, all the three are present in uh, opc concrete that's why we have in gpc also all the three components okay only thing difference is a liquid component liquid component is a mix up sodium hydroxide and sodium silicate okay as i told you in terms of sodium we can use potassium also okay now want uh, to bring up uh, people who are working in geopolymer concrete in india they must know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide know the concentration and report it not in molarity alone other properties also okay and it is always laboratory made sodium and labor but sodium silicate solution is a factory made we are purchasing and we must get this to information from the manufacturer or not only that we should also you uh, measure them in the laboratory please don't worry about molar but you can uh, repeat, uh, we can uh, actually replace with weight okay weight is more easy to understand by engineers so it is a weight ratio and solid concentration this uh, information should be available for every sodium silicate we are using okay not from the only manufacturers uh, point only our own measurement also should be made and often i found uh, uh, sodium silicate uh, dealers they don't mention these two parameters because sodium silicate is a, such a common chemical used for many many applications uh, having you know application since 200 years so there are many many uh, small small players uh, dealers who just buy sodium silicate and supply to particular people but uh, unfortunately sodium silicate is of hundreds of sodium silicate solutions available in the market okay and uh, every dealer knows what to give to everybody and they, they there is no problem but when they give it to geopolymer we love problems so we must at least know these two properties of the uh, solution we are getting that's what my request is okay now why do we what why do we add sodium hydroxide this uh, silicon dioxide sodium oxide is a parameter of the sodium silicate solution okay now in our geopolymer reaction this ratio should be reduced reduce means we can add na2o so to add na2o we are using sodium hydroxide so you can see the equation here that means our purpose of adding sodium hydroxide solution to the sodium silicate is not alkylate this is wrong let every chem you know geopolymer concrete person should know that we are not talking about alkylate here we are talking about na2o content so na2o content is added through sodium hydroxide solution and we get the uh, this ratio reduced which is useful for us okay please remember this point okay now but why do we why is that uh, ratio is important this ratio you can see the curve here say the x axis is uh, this sio2 by na2o ratio and y axis shows uh, what are the different species present in the sodium silicate solution sodium silicate solution is not like sodium chloride solution in sodium chloride sodium and chloride they will fully ionize 
no problem at all, no other material come. You take sodium sulfate, again sodium and sulfate ions, but in sodium silicate, it is not sodium and silicate ions alone. There are so many species and they are all called by different names. So you can see here some names are put here, but you can say, you know, they are called dimers, trimers, because uh, silicon uh, will be always uh, uh, available in so many format in our spin silicate solution. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, let me not go into too much detail into that. Silicon dioxide is present in the sodium silicate dissolution of the order of 30% or 25%. Whereas if you take silica alone, that is sand, if you put in water, and the percentage uh, which can dissolve is SiO2, you can take any SiO2, 50 ppm, means 0.005%. Where we are having 30%, you can imagine how much of silicon we have put into the water and we are not able to see it. That is the reason this uh, silicon has entered into so many uh, uh, formats and able to be inside the water. So that's why we must remember that uh, uh, important is uh, this uh, ratio is important. And we must calculate that this ratio for our final solution you have made. We, nobody in my calculating in India, it is not correct. Who should calculate so that we know we have got a feeling that what kind of you know species we may be having. Now, depending on the weight ratio, we can see the pH will change. Okay, when the pH is lower, you can see uh, when the uh, weight ratio is lower, you can see pH is higher. Okay, and you can see here 3.2, you can it will go on, uh, pH will go on increasing. But you can see pH is only from 11 to 13, not, not much change in the sense. Uh, if you take a 10 molar solution of uh, 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 sodium and oxide, generally we use the, the pH is 15 there, 15 pH. But uh, when you mix with sodium silicate, it comes down to a very small value. So let us remember that we are talking about the mixture of very low pH value compared to the sodium hydroxide. So uh, don't uh, think that sodium hydroxide is meant for uh, creating the molarity. No. But we have to characterize the sodium hydroxide, that's why you call molarity. Okay, I think we can start using a percentage concentration as a parameter in a molarity for sodium hydroxide in India. Okay, both mean the same thing, there is one uh, relation between them. So, engineers will be able to understand the percentage better than uh, no molarity. Okay, 10% means 10% solid in 100% uh, uh, you know, solution, that means 10%. In 10 gram, you should add uh, with 90 gram water. That's all it is percentage. It is simple. Whereas in uh, molarity, it is a very, very tough uh, uh, definition and uh, nobody follows it properly in India. Okay, now this is, uh, you can see any other solution when you make in the uh, laboratory anywhere, it can go up from 70 to 15.3. That is a possibility of making a sodium hydroxide solution. Whereas uh, we use uh, from 14 to 15. In our uh, yeah, in our geopolymer system, we never use less than 14. Okay, because 10 molar is the most commonly we are using, and more than that 10 molar. We can see here uh, sodium silicate solution in the market. It is a pH of only 11.8 to 12.8. When you mix these two, we get only 12.5 to 13.5. Whereas uh, this, you can see pH is uh, 14 and 15. It never comes into the sodium silicate solution. Let us remember. And when you make a geopolymer concrete mixer, the pH is only 12.65, which is similar to the ordinary concrete. So don't think geopolymer concrete is any high alkaline uh, chemical or alkaline mix. No, it is ordinarily mixed similar to ordinary mix. Let us remember this. Okay. And uh, now let us uh, see in general term what is the geopolymer concrete. Okay. I am not giving numerical values. We'll have some other day where we can talk on numerical values, but these are these uh, whatever I'm telling on geopolymer, all these uh, parameters have been studied and the numbers are available for this. This is not uh, taken from many literature and put here. It is all measured by us. I will work in SCRC and also in SRM unity and also my colleagues in so many places. Okay, they worked in so many engineering colleges and the universities uh, with our collaboration and all of them have contributed to this information. We can see here, it is a fast end development, generally speaking, okay? Because it is polymerization reaction. And we are using waste, this is advantage. 
okay because your flares black man slag and so many other things and most important is embodied energy is reduced okay it is a uh, embodied energy is how much energy is goes into making one cubic meter of the concrete till it is put in the site so that is called embodied energy and uh, it uh, involves the involved in production as well as transportation placing everything involved in that energy. and this can be calculated not by as numbers are available for every operation and you can do it similarly uh, what is the carbon dioxide emission occurs per cubic meter of at various stages of the material usage and production so these two numbers can be measured and this gives the carbon footprint and this i have been calculating for last 25 years when i was working in high volume flash concrete but now these two have become important in the present world okay these two have become important now another advantage it has got acid resistance i have we have proved it not necessary to just say by uh, reading the literature we have proved it so there is no free lime the chemical reaction is different there is no free lime naturally geopolymers are polymeric that's why acid resistance is high and temperature resistance this i want to give more clearance here temperature resistance is equal to ordinary concrete for general uh, formulations but if you make the formulation proper i am using the word proper then only you will get high temperature resistance so uh, whatever david out says worked they worked with uh, such a he worked from ceramic point of view that's why all is uh, geopolymers are always having uh, fire resistant temperature resistance not with us in india because we use mostly flyers in gcbs sometimes metal and this will not produce a temperature resistance it has to be formulated properly we did in a serum we help of our chemistry phd scholars and our jrfs of chemistry background along with civil engineers so we for a depend on science and technology project we developed temperature resistance mix which gets strength after 800 degree temperature also it will not lose that side would i made similarly fire resistance when the because temperature resistance consumes fire resistance will come and the production to steel so the ph should be high and the ph is sufficient high for production to the rebar here there is no problem here okay i want to put one point here which david did so written nicely why the production of steel in concrete is more in geopolymer is even at the end the carbonation occurs the carbonation material is only sodium carbonate here whereas in ordinary concrete after carbonate is calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate ph is around 10 to 11 whereas calcium sodium carbonate ph is more than 11 11 more than nearly 12 that means you know we are having alkaline resistance alkaline environment even after sodium carbonate is formed that means we are having protection to the steel even after carbonation so carbonation is not a big issue in geopolymer let us remember that point okay now uh, let us look at the special uh, aspects okay no chemical reactions are not at fully understood in geopolymer we need not wait for that but i want to bring to your notice that means you know we should have the proper quality control procedure control always in the place because a small uh, change in our uh, any of our uh, stages may make the uh, reaction different and we will not get the desired results which we got in the lab okay and also geopolymer is uh, always made from you know our own materials it is not factory made that's why so many kinds of geopolymers are possible whereas in portland cement only one it is portland cement portland cement only thing uh, some you know strength may differ some small uh, you know fineness may change but the chemically it is the same portland cement only but here we are in so many kinds of geopolymers even though it is aluminum silicate but there are so many types of aluminum silicate and as i was telling liquid component is very important here and careful formulation is required once you make the formulation care uh, uh, your uh, liquid component by mixing your let us say sodium hydroxide sodium silicate and other chemicals that should be characterized and kept in your mind and in the lab in the record so when actually start using it check up whether that uh, solution has got the properties which we have obtained in the laboratory at the time of uh, optimization this must be done otherwise the geopolymer concrete mixes will fail on the site because we may make some uh, changes without our knowledge and it will make the you know geopolymer concrete uh, and it is uh, no, no, no. unshaky and the reaction may be different that's why uh, 
not only use the careful formulation system, it also characterize them because the sodium hydroxide, as I told you, so many uh, know, concentrations are possible. And sodium silicate, so many so, uh, kinds of sodium silicate available in the market. That's why we must uh, make the formulations, uh, which is possible to make so many formulations. And that means uh, characterization is very important because it is uh, this uh, liquid component is not yet fully factory made. Though from SMNOT, we are given to one uh, person in uh, one uh, company in uh, Mosarai, and he is able to produce one uh, liquid component which can be generally used without bothering about molarity or uh, molar ratio or weight ratio or uh, any other. So it will give a, a limited uh, amount of uh, uh, actually geopolymer concretes. That is okay for most of the applications. So we'll see if we can use that. As I have been telling, we must have the authority control. Without that, no. So geopolymer cannot be become a common material on the site. This is impossible. Anybody talks about it, I don't know who they are talking. So it cannot replace Portland cement, impossible. Because Portland cement has been produced in the factory perfectly. And uh, simple addition of water. And many times, you know, it has been proved that, you know, we can manage, anybody can uh, buy the uh, cement and add water and get to whatever he wants. That kind of thing is not possible in geopolymer. And it, because that uh, quality control system is uh, to be studied, put on the site also. Okay, and chemical testing is a requirement. So, uh, only organizer site geopolymer concrete can be used. Organize, not big organizing means not chemistry people. Only civil engineers should get trained and see that they are uh, uh, making it you know, properly. It is required for Portland cement also. Don't think Portland cement does not require an organizer. See, why RMC is better than uh, site mix? Because RMC has got uh, highly trained people. They will see what can be done and what changes to be made if it is required for a particular site, they will do it. That's why, you know, RMC is better because it is organized in the sector. Same thing has to happen in geopolymer. It cannot be done in unorganized sector. Please remember this point. Okay. And one more thing, people talk about water binder ratio in uh, geopolymer concrete, it is wrong. Okay. Because water cement ratio is valid for ordinary concrete perfectly. It is able to explain the property of the Portland cement without any uh, much uh, difficulty. If you know the water cement ratio, what is durability, what is strength. But same number is not available. Parameter is not geopolymer concrete. And uh, we can see here, uh, recently somebody studied you know, using uh, artificial network uh, system and uh, uh, neural network. And uh, they took more than 200 uh, uh, publications from the literature, and uh, they have proved that you know, these are the parameters which will affect the uh, strength of the concrete. Say one, two, three, four, five, not only one. So please, uh, anybody doing uh, paper writing and uh, telling that you know uh, uh, change the water point ratio, you get the strength. It is not correct one. Okay, that is only one of the parameters. Other parameters also important, and keep that in the picture. I'm not telling you we should not uh, talk uh, other than water binder ratio. We should talk and keep that in the picture. No doubt in our work, water binder ratio maybe is the most important. That is water solid ratio. But other component also we should measure and keep it. In some other way, it may be required. Okay. I want to make one uh, small statement here. In ordinary concrete, if a water cement ratio is reduced, water binder is reduced, definitely, definitely, definitely strength is improved. Definitely, definitely durability is improved. Okay. No doubt you have to take care of the workability. All those things can be taken easily. Whereas in geopolymer concrete, it is not one number. Some cases, when you increase the water binder ratio, or that is a solid to liquid ratio, actually you may get a higher strength. In some other case, reduce it. So both are possible. Because when you add uh, no more ratio, higher ratio, you are adding more chemicals. That means more reactive components. So it gives a uh, no reactive component for us. So otherwise, uh, reaction would not have occurred. Please remember that's why that uh, solid to liquid ratio is not one parameter which determines the strength in all the parameters. Reduce the liquid uh, solid ratio, you will get the, I mean, solid liquid ratio, you get higher strength. Is not a valid statement for all the geopolymer concrete matrices. Keep this in the mind. Okay. And uh, as I told you, 
potential cemetery factory remained that's why you know it has got a completely uh, assured property of the site still we do the testing and geopolymer binder is not at made in factory that's why we have to have uh, really uh, our own control systems okay uh, but this is going on uh, till it uh, happens uh, let us uh, remember that we have to make the geopolymer with lot of quality control and uh, this uh, work is going on um, but uh, we don't know how much time it will take and uh, let us uh, we may not wait for this okay and one more thing so this is geopolymer source materials uh, fly uh, ggb as a metal in their properties also will vary so much okay and their combination also we have to make lot of variations possible that means you know how to make the combinations how to make that you know understand the differences in the properties of uh, these materials to our geopolymer system all cannot be put in one uh, state bracket we have to go on studying it and uh, making our own uh, understanding then we can go ahead okay so this is what i wanted to put here so uh, the source materials uh, how to you know, characterize them general guidelines we can talk say as uh, the silica content should be more finer should be more like that we can talk but exactly you now uh, this silica can increase the strength increase so much like that numbers we cannot put but still uh, some uh, kind of suggestions can be obtained from the literature or our own experiment we can go on so uh, strict guidelines as in happens in cement are not available here okay so the, let us keep this in the picture now uh, i have been talking about that let us go far to what is the difference okay opc has got ordinary portland cement ggbs that is we are talking about a comparison and you know uh, graticals which are again filler system there is no difference okay A liquid component only there is a difference because i told you is solution here and water okay there is a big difference here okay because sodium silicate is used uh, the concentration of the sodium silicate solids in this is very high compared to what you do in the opc opc water doesn't have any other component much there okay uh, whatever is super plus is there anything where uh, it will not add to the solid content at all whereas sodium silicate is very high uh, solid contents are there that's why admixtures of opc will not work here because that admixture will start interacting with the uh, components of sodium silicate and that affects our uh, reactions later on because our uh, sodium silicate is a basic liquid which gives a reaction system for the bias uh, and ggbs so this should not get disturbed so uh, ordinary uh, our uh, admixture development of opc will create problem here because they will start interact with sodium silicate okay and uh, we should keep this in the mind so if anybody is making work on uh, admixtures he should do at least 20 times and say that okay my uh, naphthalene is working my melamine is working my carboxyl not one or two times it works sometime it may not work so let us keep this in the mind our uh, one phd scholar made more than 27 admixtures because she got many admixtures from paint industry also and uh, we found that none of them work consistently either for workability increase or workability retention so without that mixture you have to manage all over work here which is not difficult it can be done portland cement was always like that only over last 20 30 years only 40 years the even though it is more than uh, uh, nearly 200 year old material uh, 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 this admixture has started coming uh, in large scale only last 30 40 years so there uh, without uh, that also people have managed very big buildings and uh, sites so same thing can be done with geopolymer also and the mixing machine there is no difference okay uh, not uh, specific only thing i want to make one comment here let us make a good mixer machine for geopolymer so that our liquid content is reduced from the economics point of view okay so uh, in uh, so sodium silicate uh, solution we need not add for increasing the workability only for reaction purpose that means we should have a very good mixer machine and this can be designed and probably people can work on this mixer machine separately to make the best machine which is uh, available in many uh, railway paper plant factories their mixer machine is so different from all of us uh, they can use a 0.28 watt resistance to still the make mix the mix work okay in scrc we made uh, we purchased a mixer machine Where with 0.12.14.15 water resistance ratio or water bond ratio, we can make the mixture flow through. And I saw this mixer machine, a good mixer machine in Malaysian 
laboratory of Unimap at Perlis. Again, their mixer machine is so good. So with little liquid, they are able to make the concrete flow. Same thing happens in Dr. Vivarangan's laboratory at Curtin University in Australia. And also wherever, you know, this uh, Malosara, VK Malosara worked in uh, Canada on high problem concrete and uh, high volume of large concrete. Their water bend ratios are very small, still they're getting workability. One of the main reason is their mixer machine. And uh, in laboratory also, usually we should use only pan mixer or screw type, not this drum type. Drum types are really not good for the uh, development of the mixes, any OPC mix also. So uh, especially smaller drum types are very bad. So we must buy always pan mixer or a screw type mixer and start working on the materials. And they are not very costly, it is available. Molds, there is no difference, compaction, there is no difference, demolding time. Actually, not difference, but we can make it faster in geopolymer, but that is not a main issue here. So, the devolving time can be planned as in OPC as well as in GPT. It is not uh, different. Only thing is important is curing. In geopolymer concrete, we should never use water because we are talking about polymerization. Polymerization does not require water for reaction, whereas in Portland cement, water is required for reaction. That's why we must do the water curing without water or moisture, there is no curing and there is no strength development and OPC concrete is very bad. It is due to rain. When a geopolymer, if you put water in due to rain, only air curing and self curing. Sometimes you may use hot curing also, hot air curing. That means, you know, this so curing is so different here. There's the only difference. Okay, now the development of strength. Though I put your slower in the water here and the OPC can also be to get the strength level to what you want at water rate. But because geopolymerization is possible here and polymerization reactions are managed easily and faster. So generally we can say geopolymer concretes will develop faster strength. And most of the strength may be obtained in a short time because polymerization reaction would be over by one week or two weeks or three weeks. Whereas a cement reaction will continue forever. Okay, one after three months also, it will continue after one year, two year, reaction is continuing. Whereas geopolymer, most of the time it is over by two, uh, one or uh, two weeks or three weeks or one month like that. Okay, concrete grades. Don't write any paper telling that geopolymer concrete is stronger than OPC concrete. Don't write such sentences anywhere because it is a question of mixed design. Okay, for particular case, you might have got lower OPC strength. Doesn't mean that you, uh, it is better than geopolymer. No. So that's why I put here, we can have the grade changing from M10 to M200. Okay, M200. Uh, M200 has been made at SCRC laboratory by Dr. Billy. And uh, SRM, you know, uh, we, we went up to 70 MPa, and uh, which one I was having in SCRC also. So it is possible to use uh, uh, our particle packing theory and get strength up to 200. That is important. So it is uh, not only the uh, proportions, how do we reduce the core content of the system? There is a packing theory. And by that, the, by that strength will go up, and that is the meaning of M200. And actually, OPC concrete has got a possibility of M2000. M2000. And we are uh, able to get uh, in laboratory in uh, France 800 per OPC. OPC. And 350 has been produced. And 150 is always available as RMC in many countries. 150, M150. So in India, talking about M20, M15 is wrong. It is very misuse of OPC. We should not talk about M20, M30, M40. We should talk about M40 and above. Not for a grade of a structural purpose. It is for the durability purpose. Even if we don't require so much of strength for structural design, we must produce it so that we'll have the better durable concrete. Because, workability, because durability depends upon the uh, water cement ratio. And reducing water cement ratio only can give high strength. So that, is, that kind of OPC, let us remember that. And GPC is naturally uh, having a higher durability because of the polymers. And uh, cost. Actually, the cost is always, uh, in every new material, it is always a difficult parameter. And uh, what I found was, it is, uh, many times it is almost equal to OPC, maybe slightly more. Depends upon the sodium silicate, sodium hydroxide. Uh, how, how do we buy, how do we buy, and how do we handle, that is the thing. 
and in, uh, if it is then handled properly and uh, purchased in bulk, uh, it can be uh, in some analysis we found it is uh, maybe even cheaper also. Okay, one uh, railway sleeper mix design I, talk, I took and I uh, converted into geopolymer concrete, I found uh, the mix will be cheaper by at least 5%. Okay, uh, so it is possible. Okay, but generally speaking, we can always uh, simply say it will be about 10 to 15% costly, generally speaking. Okay, uh, otherwise, uh, okay, now I will come to the uh, no, another property called bond strength. We want, we are all using concrete for uh, with reinforcement only. So bond is very important and we have studied a lot on the bond strength in uh, SRM as well as uh, CRC and also all over the world people are studying now uh, in India also. And the bond strength is always higher because of the chemical nature of the, uh, uh, the geopolymer which has been studied by our PhD scholar, uh, Mr. Bopalan. And that's why bond strength of the geopolymer without doubt it is higher. And sulfate resistance also very high because we don't have the uh, free calcium oxide. So this has been studied and I want to bring to your notice uh, here, sulfate resistance, anybody reporting less than six months, there is no test at all. Sulfate resistance should be studied only after more than a year, then only report, otherwise don't report. The paper doesn't have any value, the work doesn't have any value. So please remember sulfate resistance should be studied for more than one year minimum and always two, three years. And don't study sodium sulfate at all. Not important. Magnesium sulfate is important. Because sodium sulfate generally it is not uh, uh, so much uh, damaging than uh, magnesium sulfate. So uh, combination we can study. So uh, when you're working on uh, durability, keep magnesium sulfate as a main parameter and, and always more than one year keep the study. That people cannot study uh, sulfate resistance unless they are having the previous people's uh, no, uh, space months. Only PhD and general R&D work people can study sulfate resistance. And regarding chloride diffusion, the study we made a lot, and the RCPT is not a designed for chloride diffusion, never. It was designed only for OPC purpose only, OPC concrete, not for any other concrete. In all other concrete, it was not designed for uh, flyage concrete, not designed for slag concrete, never. It was only for OBC concrete. So this number of words they give the ASTM is not valid because we never measure chloride content here. That's why it is not a good parameter for measuring the chloride division in real terms. This is better. Chloride division coefficient we can measure. Okay, this is they are simple calculations, simple measurement. Only time involved is little more, and uh, we have to break open the specimen, study what is the thickness of the uh, uh, thickness to which the chloride is entered. So that's why this, uh, when you do chloride division coefficient, really it is a picture of a chloride division, not RCPT at all. Some of RCPT tests were done for OPC and they connected that. What is the chloride division value and this uh, charge pass and they connected. So that uh, connection is not done for other uh, concrete. That's why it's never a parameter for any other concrete. But even that, we found it is uh, slightly lower than ordinary concrete. Okay. Um, it is because it is electrical conductivity test basically. And uh, protection to embedded steel, we have studied it for uh, ferrocement, uh, RCC, so many things we have studied. Even for the directly bar itself, we have put in our geopolymer uh, liquid, studied the properties and found that it is having excellent uh, protection. Our liquid system is excellently protecting the embedded steel. Okay, structural behavior. Again, not necessary to study much structural behavior in, because everybody is studying in India. Uh, we found that, uh, and also many people's work also shown that beam, column, slabs, shells have been studied in our in SRM as well as in SCRC. And we found the structural behavior is almost similar to ordinary concrete uh, for the equivalent strength, maybe even better also. So we there is no doubt about the structural behavior. Okay, then embodied energy we can use by calculation and show that it is less. And this, uh, uh, our open has studied a lot on that. He took actually the buildings and followed uh, the concrete and uh, proved that embodied energy is saved in the building by how much. And carbon dioxide emissions over how much. I connected them to achieve the number of trees because global warming, we want to connect it to the trees. And he found that one cubic meter of concrete, geopolymer is replacing the 
uh, one cubic meter of OPC, it is equal to 100 trees being planted or 100 trees being not cut. So you can understand the importance of biopolymer from ecology point of view. And so we can say geopolymer is a superior or conservatively similar to high temperature resistance, acid resistance, thermal conductivity. These numbers have been measured by us and we found there is not much difference or we can say it is better also. Okay, now we would never use a ordinary concrete uh, just like that in some special situations. We want to change the property. Let us say a lightweight concrete we want to make. We can add flash grid. That is possible in geopolymer. This has been studied by us. And we can add fibers, so many fibers to get the ductility, energy absorption, and toughness, so many things that can turn me geopolymer. So this number is available. And features concrete, this is only not much work is done. And we uh, initiated the work and uh, features concrete, uh, we have to study a little bit more. And uh, um, that is the only pending work uh, in this case. Okay. Now foam concrete is becoming in geopolymer in ordinary concrete very well. I mean, Portland cement has been um, uh, used for uh, making the foam concrete. Same thing, geopolymer system can be made for making lightweight concrete. And the aluminum powder was uh, made, uh, used to produce uh, lightweight concrete, lightweight aerated concrete, that is the uh, articulate aerated concrete. Same thing, uh, same mix, uh, aluminum powder can be used for geopolymer system also. Because aluminum powder works with uh, the uh, pH of the cement uh, being more, it works. Uh, our uh, pH also is uh, nearly more than 12. So aluminum powder also will do the same job as it happens uh, does in the Portland cement where it produces hydrogen ion, ion gas, hydrogen gas, same thing it produces. By that, you know, the, um, uh, the metals become lightweight. Okay, and nanoparticles have been proved to be very useful for uh, ordinary concrete for improving so many properties. Microtracker that is possible with ordinary concrete uh, geopolymer also. This work was initiated in SRM and uh, with the help of our uh, physics, uh, chemistry, and chemical engineers, we proved that uh, nanoparticles do help GP GPC to get uh, different properties. And in ordinary concrete, people have been using uh, some ceramic particles admixture for improving the temperature resistance and to get the high temperature in the ceramic matrix. That kind of uh, mixing can be done for uh, geopolymer also, and we have proved that uh, many cement, the ceramic particles of Portland cement uh, for improving the high temperature ratio work for the geopolymer also, maybe in different levels. Okay. Now, uh, ordinary concrete has been used for many applications like nuclear waste uh, and cap, uh, disposal, hazardous waste disposal. All these uh, works of the ordinary concrete can be applied to geopolymer concrete, and these results are available with us. Uh, we initiated that work, I initiated this work, and uh, definitely geopolymer is better than this uh, ordinary concrete in terms of this uh, disposal also. Recently, one PhD scholar worked in uh, um, SRM Unity, that paper came out, though he, his knowledge on chemistry of the cement is uh, very less, but he used the geopolymer formulation. He proved that it is having very high uh, nuclear radiation uh, resistance. The diffusion of the nuclear radiation through the geopolymer formulation he has made is so good. That's why he called it as high performance geopolymer concrete for uh, nuclear applications. Recently, uh, within a lot of few days back, uh, the PhD thesis was. Now, I want to bring to your notice the bond strength. How different is the geopolymer? Say so this is the bond stress and this is the strip. And this was made on the plane bars. Okay, on the plane bar, when you study the bond strength, when the load of the pulling is applied, after reaching top level, next you know it will go on reducing very much. Suddenly there is a drop in the load carrying capacity, bond stem. Whereas in geopolymer, actually it won't suddenly reduce. There is a level of some small increase will go on occurring, and this is similar to strain hardening type. And strain hardening type behavior is uh, due to the chemical nature of the steel and the geopolymer. And this has been proved by our PhD scholar with the help of the uh, instruments we had in SRM uh, that uh, particle near the surface of the uh, steel were taken, studied separately, and found that how the geopolymer is different, okay, for creating the better bond. Okay. So, uh, this uh, uh, 
definitely geopolymer is a structural material no doubt it has got lower carbon footprint there is no doubt this is to can be calculated and definitely service life is higher because more strength is higher so uh, actually i had a opportunity opportunity to really meet uh, this david it's uh, he person who is a uh, godfather of uh, um, geopolymer in the world and uh, actually he is a phd scholar who working with me on the bond strength and he is a structural consultant for more than 25 years he is a college of engineering india alumni having his own consultancy company for last 30 years and he wants to you know after finishing his geopolymer uh, phd he is uh, writing the thesis and he wants to produce a geopolymer uh, products and uh, actually she is from chemistry department in srm and uh, through her only we did lot of work on the material science she is from jay lakshmi and uh, and these uh, these people came from actually india and this is meeting at uh, france uh, in uh, june where every year used to conduct a, a workshop for three days and all over the people all over the world people come and attend his uh, uh, presentation and uh, we had a opportunity to go there and visit them visit him and he called me to his house and gave his a geopolymer chemistry book and he always tells me guides me to use the word properly in geopolymer things that's why he doesn't like the alkali activator solution some, some names he doesn't like because there is no question of activation because uh, fly ash is already activated because of its fineness and the charge in nature okay and uh, we had visited so many places in the world uh, so malaysia he now he has become r and d vice chancellor in uh, unimap at uh, least in malaysia and he is a wonderful finder paper on but every one week or two weeks there is a phd scholar coming out in geopolymer and most of them are not from civil department they are from uh, geology polymer and so many types and uh, we had a chance to meet him there and this uh, 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 you know uh, we had a presentation of our work there and he called us for his another work uh, presentation in um, vietnam again we went there and uh, made uh, our presentation also and uh, in europe i went to actually uh, this is uh, hansi lesik hasik he is a man who worked uh, in un as a clay chemist and he has used the geopolymer for making statues like stone he is not civil engineer so what i mean is geopolymer is such a wonderful material by proper foundation it can replace a stone like artificial stone and he has made those products in his factory a laboratory uh, you can see that and we have come to him completely material science oriented okay and uh, we were his guest in uh, jack uh, republic uh, in prague and we had uh, visited and seen that uh, formulations i don't know this is another man provis anybody reading in geopolymer if they don't read provis that means they have not done the proper work so this is uh, uh, sheffield university professor and uh, sir uh, provis but uh, unfortunately or fortunately i don't know provis is always uh, taken to task by david owitz in his uh, presentation uh, because he doesn't want to use the word uh, alkali activator material and uh, thing like that you know it is not a geopolymer but but the works are wonderful and is another person jason jani is a civil engineer sri lankan tamil in civil engineer worked so much on cement concrete so much and he worked on geopolymer also whatever you want to think on geopolymer already would have worked and now he is working on uh, 3d printing also so we had a chance to actually interaction with him in srm university and this is a uh, professor jayakshmi and uh, these are the phd scholars he phd scholar these are two are our scientists who built the lab in nazar sundar raja baskar and this is dinesh now dinesh is latter credit in hyderabad uh, r and d engineer is work so we had a meeting and uh, and uh, we had uh, actually uh, bb rangan also coming to srm and we had interaction with him and one uh, conducted one uh, workshop at that time this photo was taken you can see actually the manufacturer of sodium silicate solution who sponsored a work in srm he is their ms jain he is from kutu he is from kiran global chemicals and and he is the person professor tp ganeshan 
who took me to SRM and told him to told me to start the Center for Advanced Concrete Research without giving me the teaching assignment. That means I had a full time for research and uh, I continued my research work. That's why you know, I could do a lot of work. Whereas, you know, many times uh, it doesn't happen in uh, uh, colleges because they've got so much work to do. So teachers so I find it very difficult to do research. That's why probably uh, he was my professor in IIT uh, two times. 1978, I went for MS, he was my teacher. And 1989 also I went, he was again my teacher. Uh, so I know he is a highly practical man. And he built the SRM in the to that level. And uh, this, this is interaction. And you can see our all friends known to every one of us here, uh, Professor Jagadish. And he is a person, uh, uh, Prabhakar, who actually you can see this uh, can here. We have made one formulation given to him. He produces that chemical in the factory. So we can bring that chemical, mix with our uh, uh, device, get the strength ready. And uh, room temperature curing, and this way used in many site applications also. So this mix was released in a Madurai in a, in a seminar, and this is a, it was part of the Association of Concerned Civil Engineers uh, uh, function, and this is the photograph. Of that. And uh, so this I have already told you, and uh, this embodied energy uh, carbon dioxide we can calculations we can do that, and uh, we found that you know one typical formulation you can see that here you know uh, embodied energy is reduced in geopolymer and the carbon dioxide emission is reduced. Okay, cost is not much changed. Okay, this is from there, and this building was analyzed and proved that you know um, uh, geopolymer how much is the saving. Okay, this number is available, and uh, this is important. So when we save the carbon dioxide emission. Uh, this is the number available in the UN publications, and we have saved 40 tons of uh, carbon dioxide in that building. That means equivalent to 16,000 trees. So if you give the number uh, value to the uh, this geopolymer concrete, it becomes cheaper value wise. Okay, not uh, initial cost wise. In the end, uh, if you consider the ecological uh, advantages, it will become cheaper than ordinary without any doubt. So let us let's not talking about that. Okay, now. Uh, I think uh, time is uh, running. I will not go into the details. Uh, we'll have some other time to discuss on this. Okay, that uh, sodium silicate should be characterized for these four materials. I wanted to know. All these four components should be measured by our workers in the geopolymer concrete. If they are not uh, reporting any of these. That means they are not using uh, sodium silicate properly. Okay, I wanted to bring to your notice. And one more thing, I want to bring to the engineers' uh, notice. Don't use Na2SiO3 as sodium silicate for all the sodium silicate solution. No, it is meant for only one ratio. And when you have got ratio of changing from 1.8 to 4.2 in the market, in our lab we use 0.5 to 4. All this uh, SiO2 by Na2 is not one. That's why this term sodium silicate solution, Na2SiO3 should not be used. Better use this Na silicate, sodium silicate. Please remember this. Don't write Na2SiO3 as the uh, Parameter equal to sodium silicate, no. Okay. And, um, this I've already discussed with you. Uh, this thing. And now, molarity, I want to print your notice again. Sodium hydroxide solution can have 0 to 19 molarity. That means pH can change from 7 to 15. Okay. And uh, what you use in the in our geopolymer is 4 to 18. Then pH of that uh, solution will be varying from uh, 14.6 to 15.5. But when you buy the sodium silicate in the market, it is only this much. Sodium silicate solution is having very high pH. But when you mix these two, it is so small. Please remember this point. Okay. This molarity never comes in the final solution. Okay. As I have been telling, the sodium hydroxide used to only give the Na2O content to the our mix so that ratio is reduced. Okay, I wanted to bring to your notice. And this is discussion about the molarity, how people are not using properly. Uh, that, okay, this uh, I think uh, I've already told, but I will uh, make it again more clear here. Geopolymer pH is 12.65 measured value. And uh, geopolymer uh, OPC is 12.65. There is no much difference at all. Okay, so don't think our geopolymer concrete is having a high alkalinity. Even though, because we look at the sodium hydroxide solution and think like that. 
it is not so that's why when i gave the gloves and uh, you know this uh, uh, things like that you know in S crc and as well as SRM, workers use only for a few days rather than they stop using it because portland cement in india nobody uses gloves or fronts uh, because uh, they are used to it so same thing happened to joe polymer to prove that it's not different from opc but OPC also, uh, we should use gloves as they do in other countries. So, from whatever precautions we are running for OPC, should be continued by keeping gloves. Okay. Now, uh, let me learn. So, this I have already discussed with you. Now, let us go to the. Uh, I will go very fast for the uh, applications. Uh, so, uh, this is the center for ash application, the center in Rachur, and uh, we had an interaction with them, and they were the. Uh, uh, industry partner for our uh, DST project also, and uh, they are it is a central government organization, sorry, state government organization uh, with uh, uh, thermal power plant and Norwegian government. So we made them design and showed them, and uh, these are the you know, which we made there in geopolymer concrete. You can see. So these are the you know you can see all the pre-cut products. Whatever they are made in geopolymer, ordinary concrete, or, uh, usually they use a fly ash concrete, and we made all of them in uh, geopolymer concrete. Because as I told you, whatever we do in Portland cement concrete can be made in geopolymer concrete without any exceptions. Okay, you can see. So, and actually we made so many uh, uh, pre-cut product. Uh, they made an uh, actually uh, exhibition and at your demo center they called at that time it was uh, uh, inaugurated also and uh, this is the show of the, uh, the display center and uh, okay so more concrete on the site we have made all the precast products possible with ordinary concrete and this was sent by somebody to me uh, they used uh, you know uh, you know ferro uh, uh, cement is uh, such a common useful material for civil engineers and instead of uh, cement mortar, can you polymer mortar? This is an example of showing that. And uh, ordinary people have used that and they have found uh, it is useful. And you know, we made paper box. Paper box, it is in a factory. We went there and uh, took our uh, formulation, told them, you know, water, you add this, and you know, cement, you use a flash at a little of GGPS. So this was actually produced in a factory and showed them. Okay, this is a nano provoker. Is a MD of uh, Kutua Silkets in Madurai. He is uh, marketing that. He is a Janesh who built our uh, center for advanced concrete research in SRM. And uh, now he is in Atikrit. He is a man behind all the practical application development. And the paper blocks, you know, we made to another factory. And uh, we, uh, whatever they do with the uh, Portland cement uh, using these uh, FRP um, molds, same molds we use for Joe Polymer. And we showed them. Uh, this is Bhaskar and this is Dinesh, who are the backbone of the work at Geo Polymer, and is a chemistry person uh, who has helped us to understand the chemistry side of it. Okay, and uh, that paper box were made in uh, in our cashew uh, tech uh, also. You can see so many types of powder. They see, and they were made in thousands. They were not in small on the site. Okay, you can see the stock pile using the machinery available there. Same thing, you know, uh, you know, your clean paper machine is used for making a uh, uh, ordinary concrete uh, uh, blocks. Same yet a clean type of machinery was used for making geopolymer blocks. It worked well. So we have to change the formation. And he's a man, uh, Murli, he's a man behind uh, uh, AM's factory in uh, uh, Chennai, and uh, which produced the first time high grade, uh, structural grade uh, Portland cement concretes. Uh, maybe some uh, 40, 50 years back. And he was interested in geopolymer. He sponsored a work to us and we did the project for them. And he only sponsored our uh, our colleagues' uh, trip to Vietnam. Uh, he is a great uh, personality in uh, helping the R&D in new materials. And this is uh, now our PhD scholar who is going to complete it. And uh, these two people are now, she is also a PhD scholar. And other people are here. And uh, building blocks again, you know, we went to any ordinary building block people making and uh, showed them we can make use of. And this was from the SCRC. When you are working, uh, 
Uh, as I told you, you know, that is, this is a EM factory. We went to EM factory. Whatever machinery they had, we used them to produce the building blocks. And this is Dr. Datta Zaria, who was involved in geopolymer concrete in the uh, end of uh, my service at SCRC. And uh, he was also a great uh, knowledgeable person uh, to understand the chemistry and uh, material science. Um, uh, so you can see the curing of those blocks in that place here. And uh, we tried uh, long back when we made geopolymer concrete mix in SRM. I thought, let us make a road. So this road was made without any input from the road engineers. That is the point. So we were not happy with the actually road making at this point, but it is possible. Like I use all the knowledge of uh, Portland cement and try to use it. It worked and it is uh, doing very well now also. And uh, we went to actually this uh, Chhattisgarh laboratory. I am in uh, thermal power plant, RKM. They also uh, actually sponsored our uh, trip and also our uh, material they use on the site. And we showed them uh, how to make the geopolymer uh, mixes in their factory in Chhattisgarh using pliers and GGPS. And uh, uh, you can see they used their RMC uh, unit to make the geopolymer. You can see, and they made the road. And this was uh, supervised by a, a road more than 25 years of service in road engineering. He was connected with National Highway Authority of India. So he only formalized completely the mixed proportions and the told let us use it. So this is how it is used. Uh, demonstration, you can see the different use of it. Okay. And uh, you can see the road here. Uh, Kutuba silicate in uh, Madurai, we wanted to show that the payment can be made easily with geopolymer. Uh, like a road, you know. So this was actually a demonstration made in a uh, hotel uh, campus, and he is uh, again. I told you, Kutuba Silk DFT, who is producing, and he was with Kiran Global, uh, Kumar, and uh, all our other people are here. And uh, we produced, you know, that chemical and uh, used it. Okay. So that uh, geopolymer, uh, we can see, you know, this. Uh, in SCRC, as soon as we did some mixed proportion development, we tried to make the road, and this is uh, some long back it is. Okay, this is showing that. You can see now also it is giving a very good uh, look and without deterioration. And uh, these are the people you know whom uh, um, I was associated. And this is one where you know that uh, DC district commissioner and IS officer visited that uh, cashew tech and uh, saw our precautions. And they were appreciative of the use of geopolymer systems. And uh, we induced them to make one building in geopolymer without any portland cement. So this was Angkor Nawadi building in Raichur. And uh, you can see this is the site condition where everything is used only geopolymer. All this. And the chemical was purchased from Madurai. That means a, a civil engineer didn't bother about the molarity, molar ratio, weight ratio, nothing they bothered. They took the liquid as if it is water they added to the concrete and they made the mix. And for this, you know, our uh, our uh, staff went there. And one of the staff is uh, Rajendra Bharat, Bharat Kumar, who was in our DST project as JRF. Uh, now he's in SRM doing PhD also. He was there on the site work. And our Bharat, uh, along with Bharat Bhaskar, also went uh, at Shoni. Shoni is the name uh, earlier. See, you know, he's a uh, and we can see it is it has come all right. So this is actual photo of the site condition, and uh, we made the you know uh, this is a building which has come out in the end. So and this for cement already I've shown you, and this is a one building which was made by our uh, Dr. Alakatan of uh, Bangalore. He's uh, in uh, RV College of Engineering. We have done wonderful work on masonry of the geopolymer based masonries, and uh, he built also near Bangalore using geopolymer blocks, a full building. And this is, a, you know, you can see the plan of the building. And uh, he has given some details of the uh, mixes, uh, what he has used. And uh, and this, he has used these machines for making the thousands of blocks for use on the uh, building. And uh, not in that, you know, I, he worked on the uh, so much property of the masonry. This is just to show that he has not taken to the site without the test in the laboratory. So he has understood what is the geopolymer 
paper box behavior in terms of uh, so many types of you know here it is bond study is made here it is you know bond is uh, measured uh, eccentric loading is measured and wall panel is made and studied for its subtle behavior and uh, shear bond so many things he studied okay and he took it to the site and, and this is very interesting uh, observation uh, this is in uh, you know, summer time, summer time uh, in, the, in the building, outside temperature is so high, whereas inside temperature is low. This is the summer temperature. But if we measure in the winter, you know, Bangalore is also having a famous uh, winter where definitely we don't require, uh, you know, I mean, uh, those who are in uh, Chennai and other places, they know the difference. And uh, Bangalore, you can see the inside temperature is actually outside temperature is low but inside is warmer here inside is warmer that means you know we get a comfortable thermal uh, behavior when you geopolymer building blocks because of the thermal conductivity okay so uh, and uh, as i told you any concrete can be made in geopolymer and this is one recent work at uh, uh, scrc uh, they made speed breakers using the geopolymer systems and uh, they also made a lot of building blocks using the regular uh, production capacity of uh, paper blocks. And this is the person uh, who is behind the uh, actual work in geopolymer in the CRC. And she's most knowledgeable. And her PhD, she produced the M200 grade concrete in geopolymer to prove that you know, geopolymer doesn't have any limitation on this thing. Okay. And um, Actually, she used that uh, blocks in the building in Chennai in a school building. Okay, and school building it was uh, inaugurated, and uh, and this is our uh, building in uh, uh, It was built uh, developed only for uh, concrete co composite development, and later on it was called as a advanced material laboratory. And uh, this was this came because of the UNDP people. Uh, telling that you must have a separate laboratory for concrete development. Otherwise, civil engineers were in uh, CRC working on structuring side alone. But uh, after this came out, people started working on their materials also. So this is, uh, here they have put, uh, recently they have put a uh, uh, paving uh, system. In, uh, and this is one, you know, user of some, uh, maybe 20, 15 years back, uh, a core was taken and that was filled with a, uh, Core was taken from a road, a road, a concrete road, which was high volume flash concrete, other thing, a demo road. And we took the core for making the studies on the material. And that core was filled with a geopolymer mix. And it has not shrunk and it has worked for more than, let us say, 20, 15 years. That means it becomes a very good repair material. And that was for repair and joining material. And this was done in SCRC. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Lakshmanan wanted uh, me to prove that your geopolymer gets strength of what you, uh, you tell is in 24 hours. So he told he made a uh, slab with joint and without joint. Within 24 hours of making the mix, uh, he tested the, um, he personally tested the slab and uh, proved that uh, the geopolymer makes a very good jointing material. So uh, that is the, you know, how Dr. Lakshman used to work only for the practical side of the uh, civil engineering uh, application and the structural engineering. Uh, he was a great uh, motivator for all of us. So um, this is what I wanted to make a brief presentation, uh, but I know I have gone too fast. And I tend to give only simple whatever I felt, you know, um, we can initially talk to the people. But I'm not wanting to too much of details of the mix design, mix proportion, I think. We can do at any time, uh, one, one more day we can do. And uh, civil engineers will start uh, working with this material with a little bit of uh, awareness on the material side. And we can help them to take that uh, material to the site conditions. So this is a site material. It is not laboratory material. The only thing on the site also should be properly. That has been proved by many of the applications I showed on the site. Okay, the trained people are used and it is, there is no problem. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. If any <coughs> queries are there, we'll be happy to uh, answer them. Uh, Mr. Kaushik, uh, you can go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, before uh, means uh, we take the questions. Uh, uh, 
uh, we, uh, we are thankful to all the audience uh, who have come on this day to hear this wonderful lecture from uh, Rajmane sir. Uh, it is really one of the uh, best uh, lectures, very informative uh, lectures I have uh, ever heard on uh, geopolymer concrete. When we are uh, watching, uh, for example, Virat Kohli batting in full flow, uh, we don't want the uh, uh, him to get out. So similarly, uh, I, I was uh, thinking that uh, Mr. Rajmane will continue further actually. So uh, he is really, I can say, moving encyclopedia on uh, geopolymer concrete technology and other technologies related to concrete. He has done huge work in uh, geopolymer concrete. The beauty is uh, when he speaks uh, about uh, each slide when he has spoken, he has spoken with uh, experience actually, his own experience and his information, not uh, somebody is taken from somewhere. A lot of practical work has been done and uh, it is really, I can say, one of the uh, eye-opening lectures uh, which we can, uh, which we have come across actually. He has also traveled extensively uh, to see different applications of uh, geopolymer concrete and uh, some of the things which he showed uh, like Anganwadi building that they have done and all different uh, applications in pavers, blocks and all is uh, really, as I said, uh, first time we are seeing these things actually. So we are thankful to you, sir. So we'll take the questions now. Uh, any questions can be answered now uh, by Dr. Rajmane. If uh, you have further questions after some time, probably it can be sent to uh, him or uh, you can write to technical at qcreteindia.com. We'll pass on to him and then we'll get back to you actually. So any questions can be asked now. Anybody is having any question, please ask. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Anjali, any questions are there in the uh, question bar, bar, box? You can read it out. Anjali, madam. Uh, yes, sir, there are many questions. Uh, any, uh, some of the questions, one or two, you can read it out. Yeah, actually. Some of the questions I can answer. And also, you know, audience can prepare uh, again more queries and more questions and send it to the organizer or to me also. We'll make uh, the answer ready for all of them and try to make a booklet out of the uh, answer to the query so that it is useful to everybody who wants to know about those Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, so then yes. I'll read out three questions. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, please tell me. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of the questions is how to check the quality sodium silicate solution and that was asked by uh, Jayant Sony. Okay. Sodium silicate solution, we need not think it is something new. It is already IS codes are available. IS codes are available. You can go to the code and find out how what is the testing method they are given. Okay. That is the one. Because sodium silicate has been used by mechanical engineers. Same method can be used. Okay. Now, just to make uh, our uh, life uh, simpler here, we can measure its density is a must. Okay, density. Second, we must measure its solid content. That means, you know, remove the water by evaporation and find out by, you know, gravimetry. Third is, you know, you make the uh, titration at the SCL, we can find out the NO2 content. Simple. Titration is very simple. We have done many times in our colleges. So, you know the NO2 content, you know that uh, dry powder, when you make it, you will know the... Uh, in it, you play SiO2, the difference is your uh, SiO2 content. Because to find out the SiO2 content is difficult okay, directly. Okay. Next is, you know, sometimes uh, if chemistry department is there, they are having flame photometry, we can directly find out the sodium content. But for civil engineers, we can use O1 for binding the dry content of the sodium uh, uh, that will give the SiO2 plus Na2. Just take the titration, you will get uh, Na2. Difference is the same. The density measurement is simple. So at least you should measure this. Later on, other properties like viscosity, or you know, uh, maybe some conductivity, all those things can be measured separately. Okay. So this must be done. It is not a difficult to make at all. Thank you for answering the asking this uh, very good question. Thank okay. you. 
<laughs> okay, so the next question is, uh, what will be the de-shuttering period for uh, geopolymer concrete? And that was asked by Sudish R. Uh, Demolding, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it can be same as ordinary concrete, can be even uh, faster also. It depends upon the formulations. So, depending upon the formulation, we can now de-shuttering time as much as ordinary concrete can be reduced also. Okay, so it is everything is possible. Most uh, probably we can say de-shattering is done faster because time development is faster generally. So we can say de-shattering time is less. And one, uh, after de-shattering, no curing is required. After de-shattering, no curing is required in geopolymer, whereas it is required in OPC. So there is a big relief for the uh, site engineers where they don't have to start continue the curing of the concrete at all. Thank you. Okay, sir. The next question is what is the possibility of cracks and how to control it? It was asked by Sudarshan Sharma. Uh, crack is a common phenomenon in any matrix. Okay, even in Portland cement or everywhere. So why the cracks occur? Cracks occur because the tensor strength of the concrete is not sufficient. Why the tensor strength is not sufficient? It has not developed the strength. Reactions have not taken place. This is the main reason. Okay. 53 grade cement does not produce uh, cracks. Wrong. 53 grade cement will never produce cracks if it is done properly. So, all our foreign countries are having very high strength cement. They never have a crack problem. So, we must allow the matrix to get the strength by proper curing system built in. In geopolymer concrete, you have to cover for 24 hours. So that, you know, that is, there is no, uh, no operation. Then you know, there is no shrinkage much. Okay, it, it is not a problem in geopolymer. I mean, cracks will not occur because strength would have lower. So it depends upon the formulation and the first 24 hours uh, curing system. Curing means yes. not following the ah. Liquid to dry, that's all. So, it's not an issue, generally speaking. So, the next question is Is there any mixed design procedure for GPC? It was asked by Maulia HV. What is concrete mixed design? What is concrete mix design? Not to think that concrete mix design is table calculations. No, completely wrong. Calculations are not mix designs. So we must know how much powder we are having, how much aggregate we are having, and how much liquid we are having. Mix it, uh, how much. Uh, so same quantities can be used in the ordinary concrete, in geopolymer also. Same quantities. What is the powder content? But the measurement should be in absolute volume. So, fresh concrete mm -hmm. properties of the workability I think, can be managed with ordinary concretes in terms of absolute volume of the powder. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, as I told you earlier, suppose you want to get a higher strength. Generally speaking, higher strength many times we can add a little bit of more GGBS. But when you add more GGBS, it may develop not as a geopolymer, it becomes another material. So, uh, but one of the methods is increase the GGBS, but uh, it, will, it will lose its geopolymer character. Okay. And uh, maybe, you know, uh, you can use a less of the liquid so that, you know, the reactions are faster because of the proximity of the liquid with the powdery uh, binder portion. The same thing already the concrete also. So that uh, application. So such uh, uh, systems are to be developed. And one more thing, Lisa's rule says that a particular volume of liquid is required for the workability. That's why we got the table. So, same thing can be done. So, 
that is for the development of the relative proportions of the mixes then after going to the laboratory go on um, observing and change the mixes that is the called milk design so in ordinary concrete also milk design is always uh, done in the laboratory not by the factory calculations calculation will start making us to start the work a final mix proportion will not be the one we have calculated same thing happens here also okay so don't think uh, ordinary portland cement concrete is also as a mix design procedure no it is isn't it has got only guidelines okay the final mix will come only after doing the laboratory strength and other studies also okay and koshik has talked about this a lot in his uh, lectures on uh, concrete technology when he gives a presentation how important is the laboratory studies on the mixes okay for that uh, ordinary concrete uh, guidelines can be utilized okay uh, thank you only thing is here mix design we don't have admixtures for the changing the properties in a large way so to manage the change in the properties with the help of changing the relative proportion of the mix that's all okay thank you uh, okay so the next question is uh, if we are using less purity naoh for example if you are using 90% of naoh instead of using 97% what all factors should we consider for the geopolymer concrete no 91% is a purity 90% it doesn't matter for us okay probably the person is talking about the powder powder doesn't matter we should never use this lr grid ar grid in our concrete because flash itself is a such a complicated you know material so all these pure pure compounds are not required for us pure compounds are required for pure chemical work Pure uh, compound uh, molecular formula. This is not required for us, so it doesn't matter for us. And we should never work with LR, ER grade uh, uh, sodium silicate, uh, sodium hydroxide solution at all. A uh, sodium hydroxide uh, pellets should be marketed commercial grade sodium hydroxide pellets only to you, not just the grades the LR or laboratory grade reagent grade that's not required at all. Okay, it is not required. It doesn't make difference. Okay, so the next question is: Is there any specific method for measuring the corrosion resistance of the GPC? And it was asked no, by the commission. It is same as the ordinary concrete. There is no difference. Okay, whatever uh, application the measurements of durabilities are made in ordinary concrete, same thing be made in here. As I told you. Um, that rcpt is not a good method for even opc in here and also i make one controversial statement here uh, people may not like uh, impressive current method or impressive voltage method is not a proper method of measuring the corrosion so any material somehow it has become popular because we'll get the corrosion uh, cracks within one or two days or one week uh, we are happy no it is never a proper method of measuring the concrete mix uh, for uh, corrosion resistance because again you are looking at the uh, electrical conductivity it is not a parameter it is a chemical reaction which is important so uh, alternate wetting and drying method should be adopted and always corrosion resistance studies should never be done for less than one year anybody is reporting within less one day, one year that means you have not done the work according to me more than one year properly made specimens will not give any results when i was working in high performance concrete even after 5 years alternate wetting and drying uh, excellent nothing happened to only one any specimen including ferro cement but ferro cement if it is made badly it may get you know corrosion as happens in ordinary concrete so durability studies applicable to ordinary concrete is applicable here also with real understanding of what is the meaning of durability study and what are the factors involved Okay, so uh, same method can be applied here. Okay, sir. Uh, once again, uh, I thank uh, all the audience uh, for coming on this uh, afternoon. I mean, it's a COVID uh, situation going on throughout India, and uh, we are thankful on behalf of uh, Chukrit uh, Remix uh, India Private Limited. uh to all of you and we are extremely thankful to you uh, mr uh, dr rajmane sir for giving this wonderful lecture 
and as I said, uh, he's a really encyclopedia on this uh, uh, geopolymer concrete. And I can say uh, blindly, he's, uh, uh, I can say, uh, one of the topmost uh, in India in terms of uh, the work that he has done in geopolymer concrete. And uh, we will send the questions, another, uh, remaining questions, other questions asked by the audience to uh, Dr. Um, Rajmane sir, and we'll get the answer. Once again, thanks to all. Thanks, uh, Dr. Rajmane sir, once again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, friends, uh, for uh, taking your time in COVID time. Uh, tough times, uh, tough days nowadays. Actually, I'm not able to keep track of the days and dates. And, you know, I, every day is the same for me. I mean, for many of us. So, the being locked in the house, uh, whether it's Monday or Sunday or Friday, or day. so that's why I made a mistake in actually putting the day also. Actually, Anjali uh, and Koshik uh, pointed out that I changed that. I was thinking it was Friday. So, you know, they told me to go through. I thought, oh, I heard one, uh, end one day in this week. So, the situation is so tough. So, be safe, follow the actually instructions of the you know, authorities, social distancing and all those things. And the corona can be easily uh, conquered without any problem, except uh, we should not uh, allow the uh, corona virus to enter us. Even if it enters also, we can easily remove it by doing steaming and other things. So daily, if you do the steaming, there is no question of uh, corona not coming to us. That's what uh, one uh, doctor in uh, Mumbai, another uh, police inspector in uh, Tana also told us in one of the WhatsApp group meetings. He told he has given so much of this uh, steam, you know, um, inerrance for so many people, none of them got anything. So, uh, they, I mean, uh, what I mean is uh, there are uh, guidelines available, we will try to follow it and uh, not take it uh, lightly because this year many, many people are getting affected by uh, Corona and uh, they are losing their uh, many, many live, actually, family persons and uh, friends also. So, we hope we will carry the uh, guidelines of the people I mean, who matter very much in our mind and uh, fight with this corona. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you once again, uh, the audience. And we'll come up with a follow-up program uh, on geopolymer concrete with uh, Dr. Rajmane probably next month. Uh, we'll see how best we can organize once again. Calling uh, Dr. Rajmane. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll sign off. Thank you.